Adam West, America's Adam West, best known for being Batman and Adam West, passed away this week after a battle with leukemia. He was 88 years old. It's hard to be heartbroken at the passing of a person who lived a very full life, but it's also still very difficult not to mourn the passing of a person who, up until recently, was still very active in that public life. It's that bat time. Welcome to the Bat Channel. I'm your bat host, Bat Umthan. Na 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 Doomcast. <laughs> In 1966, DC reobtained the TV rights to Batman and moved negotiation from CBS to ABC for an adventure show styled after The Man from Uncle. But the assigned showrunner, William Dozier, who had never read a comic book in his entire life, decided to make a campy pop show that was light and intentionally silly. The style proved so overwhelmingly popular with kids especially, but adults as well, that it ran twice weekly for the first two seasons and it even had a feature length film produced in its first year. Prior to this show, Contrary to current popular conception, Batman wasn't all camp. I mean, a little bit it was mostly light detective stories after the late 1940s. The 50s, with the advent of the comics code, definitely led to sillier, but still very Batman stories, and not too terribly far off from what he was in the 1940s. William West Anderson of Robinson Crusoe on Mars, and the star of El Kino Popo, a Hawaiian kids TV show where he starred opposite a chimpanzee, was cast as Batman. He'd taken the stage name Adam West. Twice divorced actor was a camp comic and dramatic talent, and the success of the show actually led to his being offered the role of James Bond in Diamonds Are Forever, but he turned it down. It's hard to fully explain exactly how much of a cultural phenomenon this show was, as well as CBS's Star Trek around the same time. These two shows struck a strange chord with Americans that defied any kind of demographic lines in a way that few other shows ever have before or since. Cultural icons like Cesar Romero, Otto Preminger, Burgess Meredith, Eartha Kitt, Julie Newmar, Tallulah Bankhead were unexpected guests on a show that was way too silly for them. This is like if CW's Arrow was a comedy, but its guest stars were people like Robert De Niro, Al Pacino, uh, Ron Howard, Steven Spielberg, uh, Jennifer Lawrence. It almost wouldn't make any sense. There's really no comparison to what Batman 1966 was like. The success led to Burt Ward and Adam West becoming popular icons in the swinging 1960s. That even meant purported drug-fueled in-costume bat orgies. Quick old chum to the bat lube. The 1970s and 80s were difficult for West and his indelible image as Batman got him typecast. Work was sparse, but West returned to voice acting on Batman the Animated Series in the early 90s on an episode about an actor who played the Grey Ghost, which somewhat mirrored West's late career. West's late career became filled with animated roles as he lent his iconic voice and distinct delivery to a variety of TV series, often playing himself or characters related to Batman. In part because of West, Batman has two sides in popular media, that once dark and brooding, dedicated to justice, and then this other equally popular campy, self-parody, permutations of which exist in Batman Brave and the Bold, Lego Batman, and parts of Batman the Animated Series. West, like Leonard Nimoy and Bill Shatner, is an icon of a golden age of American culture that was something I was able to grow up with as well through the miracle of Nick and Knight during the late 80s and early 90s. And as a result, I was able to share it with my parents, who lived it originally. In many ways, Batman and Super Friends were my first exposure to superheroes and, incidentally, comics. Adam West was my first on-screen Batman, not Michael Keaton. So it's with a sincere fondness that I say, so long, old chum. Thanks for watching, Bat Friends. This has been the Doomcast.